Hi, Professor Stefero here, and this is Molecular Motion 2. And we're going to have some fun and play around with this animation. Let's take a look at the random movement of the blue and the orange balls. We've just described in Molecular Motion 1 that particles or molecules, atoms, move randomly. And that was shown by looking at and investigating Brownian movement. So we're going to trace the random walk of one of these balls. And the tracing will show the pattern of its movement in this volume of space. And if we were to reset the trace, it should have a completely different pattern because of the randomness of the movement. And I could repeat this over and over again and it would be a different pattern in each case. Okay, now the reason why we're talking about molecules moving is because in the cell molecules are going to move. And this animation we could think of the volume of space that we're looking at here, the inside of a cell. So let's take a look at two variables. First of all, it's temperature. Temperature is the measure of kinetic energy in an object or a system. If I increase temperature, it's showing me the increased kinetic energy in the particles that are in this system. If temperature decreases, it's because the kinetic energy in the particles have decreased. So at higher temperatures, we'll have a higher kinetic energy, which means that the particles are moving faster, and ultimately it means that they have more frequent collisions coming together within this system. So let me move it back. The second is the mass of an object. Now this relates back directly to the Brownian movement that we saw molecular movement one. If I increase the mass of the orange ball, notice how much slower it is moving in relation to the blue balls. That's because the greater mass of the object is going to need more collisions with more blue balls in order for it to move around. So you can think of this like the dust particles in water. Water is the invisible molecule that we don't see, but we end up seeing the jittery and jiggling of the dust particles. So the decrease in size, if we change the size of those orange balls back to the size of the blue, they look like they're moving at the same speed because they're the same mass and they'll collide into each other as a part of the random movement. But if I increase the mass of one of those, then that larger object is going to start to move slower because it's going to need more blue balls hitting against it to actually physically displace it in the medium itself. Okay, I think that covers molecular motion too, and we are ready to talk about diffusion. So I'll see you in the diffusion video. Ta-ta!